The case between Patrice Ngana and the government of Cameroon is going to continue at the Fundi Court of First Instance in the nation's capital. Yaoundé on the 19th of January 2017, he appeared before judges of the court today during which he pleaded not guilty. In this newscast as well, we take you to the locality of Kumbo, that is in Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon to talk about the timid preparation of end of year feast. Locals are saying that it is as a result of the current crisis rocking the northwest and the southwest regions of the country. Those are headlines. Stay with us for the details. We shall be right back. Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. The trial of Patrice Ngana opened today officially at the first instance court in Fundi of the center region of the country. The civil society activist pleaded not guilty of all the charges levied against him. It should be noted that he's been charged with threats to president of the Republic of Cameroon to the life of head of state, illegal immigration and forgery. He appeared before judges of the Mfundi Court of First Instance today. That was his first trial after he was a few days or one day ago placed under pre-trial detention at the Nkondengi Maximum Prison. The civil society activist is now under pre-trial detention, as I L indicated, in Kondengi, where he was detained since on Wednesday night. This week, his lawyers have so far been decrying what they call illegal detention of their clients. Some of them were in the nation's capital. Yaoundé yesterday and equally today when the crisis or when the, uh, the, the, the trial actually began, the case has so far been adjourned to the 19th of January 2017. The case began that was today in the nation's capital. Now, Cameroon justice system has come under stiff criticisms by a victim of the interference of the administration. That is the declaration of barrister Abdullahi Arisu suffered the consequences of the country's judicial system for about three euros. So that is the lawyer of uh, the former minister of Cameroon, the minister, former minister of territorial administration and decentralization, the minister Marafa Midoyaya, who is equally incarcerated in the nation's capital. We obviously will be coming back to that report in our subsequent editions of the news. We take you now to talk about a ghastly road accident which occurred that was yesterday night or yesterday evening in the locality of Konye, that is in Meme Division of the southwest region of Cameroon, where several persons were reportedly uh, injured. The injured victims were rushed to hospital for medical attention. One of the victims of the said road accident was being rushed to the country's economic capital, Douala, died along the line. He died of overbleeding, according to reports. It should be noted that the incident occurred after a collision between a 70-seater bus and an 18-seater HIAX vehicle. That was an incident which occurred yesterday evening in the locality of Konye, Meme Division of the Southwest Region of Cameroon. Obviously, we shall be bringing two images in our subsequent newscast. Now, the non-community or the community, we take you now to Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon that has been without facilities, especially at the level of the local, local health center. It has been a very, very difficult situation for parents that have been coping with the deplorable state of health facilities or the deplorable condition of health facilities in Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon, a non-governmental organization has actually come to the rescue of local inhabitants, as Katrin Kone tells us in the following report. This ramshackle and dilapidated structure is the local health center that has been accommodating patients and expectant mothers of Noe village in Jakiri, Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon. The health unit built with mud bricks has been in this abandoned state for several decades without rehabilitation. The health center was lacking social amenities like water, electricity and toilet. Health equipment and even trained health personnel. Benefiting from a modern health center has been a dream come true to locals of the community as a non-governmental organization, Shumas, construct a new health center in the community. The organization provided health care facilities and basic social amenities like water, 
and electricity. She must also wish to train her personnel at the center. She must not only go, remain at the level of uh, providing them with a the center, but we are going to help them. We also help them at the level of uh, training the, 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 the state of designers, which already is already something at the level of uh, capacity. Released with the problem of health center, the locals are also in need of a medical doctor. We knew us. However, handling over the facilities to the community, the jail of Jakiri call on the locals to make good use of the equipment provided by Shumas. This is a health center. Eventually, it will be transformed to an integrated health center. An end-of-year feast like never before in the two English-speaking regions of the country. Let's take a particular look at the locality of Kumbu in the Bui Division of the Northwest region of Cameroon where goods outnumber the number of customers or outnumber customers. Parents told Equinox Television that times are hard, especially as a result of the crisis rocking the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon. Details in the following report. The Kumbu Central Town in the Bui Division, northwest region of Cameroon. One would hardly tell if the end of year feast is just around the corner. The usual festive mood and atmosphere that characterized Christmas is absent less than two weeks to the annual rendezvous. In the market, dealers in dresses and foodstuff are complaining of low turnover. This year a different year, not the year where we do so. Things are extremely difficult this year. No one can tell with certainty how the day would be celebrated. I can slaughter just a single cow and it takes weeks for me to finish the stock. This year they know by this year. I don't know whether they don't have money or what happened this year. Because of the crisis, there is no money. Because when you look at the situation of the nation today, these things are not moving, goods and things like that. We can only call the business not to be moving. But to me, I, I always trust in God. That's why I can say it is money. The return of sons and daughters of Kumbo from other parts of the country and abroad has been a routine in decades in December period. But locals say that the situation is different today. December, you have people from Yaoundé, Joanna, coming to enjoy their Christmas. But now, things are different. I don't see about the enjoy this time. We will try that try. We better say that we go far than for the kick -up. Everyone in the village, he says, are complaining of hard times. Parents in Congo say that because of the Anglophone crisis, the anxiety and euphoria that marked this period of the year have died down. We are not preparing like buying dresses for children, doing this, because they, there's no means for us to buy those things. We don't have the means to buy things for the children since we have crisis in this our nation, so we don't know what to do. The people of Kumbu are not sure the status quo might change, but have expressed hopes for the current Anglophone crisis to be addressed. Let's hope it can be and it cannot. But really the time is too late to give the real answer because... This is the second Christmas being celebrated since the Anglophone crisis escalated. And it's a total different atmosphere in the country's economic capital where traders or customers say that they are willing to buy but they are facing financial constraints. It is equally a very difficult situation for dealers in several items in markets that were visited by our reporter Innocent as he's going to be telling us in the following report that the buyers are getting or making purchases at the moment for fear that in the coming days or few days to end of year feast prices might increase in the market his report christmas also known as end of year feast is near various parties sellers and buyers are bracing up to raise enough income and satisfy their wants respectively 
monitoring some markets in the city of Douala, we noticed preparation is gradually vibrating as the markets swell in terms of population. The needs by households to purchase Christmas trees, toys and other articles early enough for home decoration and for their children. Though carrying out early purchases, prices are still exorbitant. They have no choice to buy now as they believe few days to Christmas cost will get sa. Some households say they storm the markets now in a bit to avoid overcrowding a couple of days to Christmas. Vendors on their part have to begin displaying their articles early enough to woo parents. Instead, very few come buying, rendering business slow. They hope for a boom as days fade out and the deal day approaching. Though business is slow, what households buy more are Christmas trees and decorative items in spite of price hikes as compared to previous years. Toys of various types are also displayed. Educative ones are most expensive. Hope is cultivated by vendors even though some parents face financial constraints. Only time and the attitude of buyers and vendors will shape and determine prospects of gain between the parties during this preparative period of the end of year feast. And Christmas celebrated on the 25th of December is the day that some Christians are believing that Jesus Christ was born. It is a period to live for, for it is a period to live according to the will of God according to some priests across the national territory. One of them was speaking to Equinox Television in the locality of Kumbu in Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon. Let's hear him in the following excerpt. Christmas is a spiritual event and uh, preparations for Christmas for me is a spiritual preparation uh, to be in a state of readiness to receive Jesus in my life and uh, of course uh, it demands much which entails a readiness always to meet Jesus because we all leave this world we don't know when so Christmas is a particular event but it spills out for me throughout my life to be ready to meet God at any point of my life so how, how should people prepare oh, for Christmas? Preparations for Christmas as I see it is paying attention to our spiritual lives above all the material preparations that we, we do, uh, the food we buy, the clean up and the hairdos and everything, but above that we be able to check our spiritual life and our relationship with God and with one another because it's an event of peace with God, with ourselves and with we now take a look at our feature page for tonight, the burning of skin of cow, which is a profitable venture to some youths in Bamenda, northwest region of Cameroon. We are going to be meeting Ba Eric, who has been in the business for several years now. He uses uh, Martin uh, gas to enable him go out or go about his activities on a daily basis. Let us have the details of the report with Smart Njikan Kepri. Mba Eric is his name. A young man who has decided to self-employ himself by roasting the skin of cows. We are in the northwest region of Cameroon. Instead of the three stone fireside that people mostly use to roast up the skin from cow, Eric has decided to use methane gas to go about this activity. According to Eric, it is the most easiest method and it has advantages over firewood because it is economical. This gas. 
it be economical. Owing to the fact that we are steadily getting into the end of year festivities, Eric tells us it is the peak period for his handwork. Like from November to December month, because November and month we put it in do death celebration. Yes, for them from December to you know how they enjoy 25th. Apart from burning, Mba Eric also buys, roasts and sells. At the time, I buy some like Kanda, they burn and sell them for people. Then. Mba Eric has been in the business of roasting the skin of cow for five years, and it is from the proceeds that he generates from this activity that feeds his family. <laughs> That is uh, the uh, activity of uh, resident in Bamenda, northwest region of the country, the Mr. Mba Eric. That is how he goes about his day-to-day -day activities with the use of gas to carry out his activities. Now we talk about traditional rulers in the Manu division of the southwest region of Cameroon that have condemned the atrocities and killings of uh, the Cameroon Defense Forces and uh, the inhabitants of the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon, especially those in Manu, they have equally criticized the uh, lootings, killings, harassments, and torture of civilians by elements of the National Defense Forces. They have called on the activities to stop all hostilities against security forces and the government to take all measures and ensure that security returns or reigns in Manu Division of the Southwest Region of Cameroon. The traditional rulers also want the government to ensure the return of those those who fled their homes following the purported communique of the senior divisional officer for my new division in the southwest region of Cameroon. We equally had information that it was a tense atmosphere in Manu that was today in the southwest region of the country. We obviously will be keeping you updated in our subsequent editions of the news. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. We also thank you so much for joining us as usual. We are wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.